Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we're going to do a controller review. This is the GameSir G7. And this controller looks and feels a lot like an Xbox controller in some ways and not in some others. And I found that the features that distinguish it from the original Xbox controllers are actually the most interesting parts. And of course, we'll get into those more subtle features in the review. But as a quick preview here, one of the features I like the most, and definitely not one of the more subtle ones, is the fact that it has removable and changeable faceplates. Personally, I'm a huge fan of customization if done right, and on this controller, yeah, they've done it well. And so as we dive into the nitty gritty, let me just say long story short that this is now my new favorite wired handheld. But at the same time, I can totally see why people would prefer to have a wireless controller instead. And so without any further delay, let's jump into it. Okay, we'll start with the unboxing here. This was sent directly to me from GameSir. No money was exchanged in any way, and all opinions are my own. Inside the box, you're going to get a warranty card as well as a sticker, and it looks like they were hosting a contest earlier to show off different faceplate designs. It also comes with a free month of Game Pass Ultimate if you are a new user. Other than that, we have a massive user guide which is available in several different languages. Now aside from the paperwork, we have our cable, which is actually 10 feet in length, so a super long cable here. And then of course we have the controller itself. Now first impression here is that it is a lot lighter than I was expecting, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that it doesn't have a battery inside. And as a result this is about 22% lighter than an Xbox controller with batteries inside. Next impression was that I like the feel of the controller overall, especially on the back. As you can see it has these gritty bumps to it right here, and these are a soft rubber texture. On the Xbox Series controller these are actually a hard plastic, and I prefer the rubber here. And yeah, when it comes to the overall shape and design and just the feel in your hands, it feels a lot like an Xbox controller. And so there's not a lot to say in the design other than if you like an Xbox controller, you'll like this too. On the bottom, we have a microphone headphone jack here, as well as a mute button. So this will mute your mic anytime you need it. Now, as far as the rest of the audio controls, these are actually going to be controlled by this M button here and then the face buttons. And so by holding down the M button and pressing up and down on the D-pad, you can adjust the overall volume up and down. Additionally, by holding M and pressing left and right, you can actually adjust the individual audio. And so to increase the game volume, you would press left on the D-pad, and to press right, you would actually increase the voice volume. I think it's pretty handy to have all these features here at your fingertips, and I like that they're labeled too, it's very easy to figure out. On the back, we have two programmable buttons. I'll show you how those work, but in terms of feel, these have a nice soft clickiness to them. And so they're not terribly loud, which I always prefer, and I feel like when you're playing it, you're not going to accidentally press down on them either. And so I think they're well placed and also have a good amount of tension to them too. Personally, what I like to do is map the right button to the A button so that I can jump in first person games without taking my hand off the right thumbstick. And then same thing with the left button. What I do with this one is I set it to X, which means it's going to be my reload button when playing the same type of game. It's a very simple setup, but this is what I used on my original Xbox Elite controller when playing Destiny back in the day. Okay, now let's take a look at the shoulder and trigger buttons. Starting with the triggers, these are analog input, and they have a little bit of grittiness on the top of them as well. As you can see, they have a fairly shallow travel, very similar to what it is on the original Xbox controller too. And I love it. To me, this is the exact amount of travel that I like to have on a trigger button. It's also super springy, another feature that I love. The shoulder buttons also have a soft clickiness to them, very reminiscent of an Xbox Series controller, and not as hard to press down on as those back bumper buttons. And so yeah, overall, between the shoulders and the triggers, I think they're perfectly placed and have a good amount of tension and spring back as well. Up top, we have the port for the USB-C cable right here. And I gotta say, this is a pretty tight fit, and so when you're playing it here, it doesn't ever feel like it's gonna actually pop out. But if somebody was to maybe walk by and trip over the cord, I think it would pop out at that point. And so I wouldn't call this a breakaway cable, but it is still pretty snug. One thing to note here is that port is pretty tight, and so just using a generic USB-C cable like this one from Anchor, it doesn't actually fit in the hole. And so that's something to be mindful of if you plan on replacing that cable down the line. Okay, now let's actually talk about the feel of the face buttons. This is a dome switch connection here, which means it's going to have a clickiness to it as well. And so it doesn't have a rubber connection like you would find on an old school D-pad or on the PlayStation. Instead, this is very similar to an Xbox One's D-pad, but maybe a little bit more travel than that one. 
Now, generally, I prefer to use rubber membrane D pads, but I would say this one isn't terribly bad. If anything, I would say it's a little bit more firm than I would like, but let's do some real world testing here later in the video. Now, by contrast, the new Xbox Series controllers have a dome style design and are much clickier than the other. I would say these are easily three times louder than the ones on the game, sir. Now, I know a lot of people like this setup because it's so precise, but me personally, I think it's just too loud and clicky. And so between the two, I would actually prefer the cross style D-pad here on the game, sir, but it's still not the absolute best that it could be. Okay, so moving over to analog sticks, I think the design here is a little bit different between the two as well. The center of the game sir analog stick has a convex shape to it, which makes it feel a little bit more rounded. By contrast, the Xbox Series controller has a concave design in the center. Now, honestly, when I'm playing, I mostly just stick my thumb on the edges of the analog stick anyway, and so I don't really notice it. But if you're the type of person that likes to put your thumb right in the center of the analog stick, you may notice that difference. In terms of tension and range, these feel identical to me. They're very snappy and feel really good. And so I'd say, yes, the caps are a little bit different, and I probably prefer the Xbox ones over the GameSir ones, but in real use, I don't really feel a difference anyway. Now in the center of the controller, we have all the same standard buttons you would find on an Xbox Series controller. Don't ask me to actually name when any of these buttons are called because they keep changing it with every iteration. Either way, they function exactly like how an Xbox Series controller would work. These also have a dome style switch connection here with very short travel, but they work fine. And finally, let's talk about these face buttons because this is the most interesting part of the entire controller for me. Now these are actually using a micro leaf connection, so they're not rubber membrane and they don't use dome switches either. Instead, these are a smaller version of what you would find on an arcade console. And so as you can imagine, when you're using an arcade, you can feel that distinctive moment when it actually clicks down. And it's the same here with this controller. In fact, I would say the closest comparison here would actually be to a mouse click. And so as you can imagine, this means it's going to be a very precise input. In fact, this is the most precise I've ever felt on a gamepad. And so to kind of put it into context, I would say it feels a lot like pressing on a dome switch like on a Joy-Con from Nintendo, but it requires a lot less force, but there's still just a little bit of force you have to press down on to make it do that click. And I wasn't sure how I was going to react to this when I first used it, but I have to say that I've fallen in love with it over the past couple weeks. To me, I find it to be kind of the best of both worlds. It is super precise, but doesn't require a lot of force to press down. And so coming into this review, I wasn't expecting this, but this has now become my favorite style of input for a controller. And so I hope to see these micro leaf switches used in other controllers in the future. Now, when comparing it to something like a PlayStation or Xbox controller, these have a rubber membrane connection, which means they're a little bit soft feeling and kind of mushy too. And another result of these type of buttons is that they're a little bit loose in their case. You can see here I can kind of move around these buttons as I go left and right. And so overall, the original Xbox controller just feels a little bit looser and softer in the hands. Now, that's not to say that these face buttons are bad. In fact, I don't mind them at all. But I've come to really favor these micro leaf switches instead. And another thing that surprised me about these face buttons is that they are super tight in the case too. As you can see right here, even when trying to move it around left and right, I actually don't get any play at all. And so yes, believe it or not, walking away from this review, I was like, man, this is actually the controller I want to use the most. Not only does it have the nice ergonomic feel of an Xbox controller, but it has a couple other perks too. And so overall, when it comes to the design, there's really not much I would change here at all. The D-pad itself is a little bit clickier than I would like, but everything else is kind of a home run. Okay, let's talk about the face plate. So there's a little bit of a notch right here at the top, and so you can stick your finger in here and just kind of pop it right out. This is connected by a magnet, and it's pretty tightly on there. I don't think it would ever fall off when you're playing. Now, my unit came with an additional white faceplate, but I think they're working on other designs, especially ones that are made by other users. And so I'm hoping that if this controller is a hit, we might have different design options down the line. Now, personally, I like the white version better than the black. I like the fact that it's white on the front and black on the back. It just has a nice kind of offset color to it. If you compare it directly to the Xbox Series S, I would say the Series controller has a little bit of a cleaner look just in the fact that it has white shoulder buttons and things like that. But for me personally, I like the more mismatched approach here with the black back and the white front. Now, another controller worth comparing to is this one here. This is the 8-Bit Doe Ultimate Wired Controller. And honestly, this exists in the same space as the GameSir one. It's a wired controller that works on the Xbox. And both of these controllers are priced at the same retail amount of $45. Now, the 8-Bit Doe one does have some key differences. For example, the face buttons do have a rubber membrane connection, much like the original Xbox controller. And additionally, the D-pad does have a rubber membrane connection, and so I actually prefer this one over the one on the game, sir. I think when it comes to classic retro gaming, the 8-Bit Doe one is probably a better fit. 
Now the 8-bit DOE controller is white on the back and also has those same programmable back buttons too. And before I got the GameSir controller, this was my primary controller to play when doing PC game testing. And as you can see here, it got quite dirty over the past six months in all of that testing that I did. Now I purposely did not clean this controller before the review so you could see how dirty a white back would actually get. Now of course the black controller will probably get dirty over time as well, but I think it's going to hide it better by virtue of having that black coloring. And so I think it's just another reason why I prefer to have the black back like on the GameSir controller. Now in terms of triggers, they're a little bit different as well. The GameSir one is very much like an Xbox, but the one on the 8-bit Doe is more like a PlayStation 4's kind of control scheme. And so to me, the 8-bit Doe one has too much resistance and a little bit too much travel too. And so between the two, I would prefer the trigger buttons on the GameSir controller as well. In the end, I think the 8-bit Doe controller is a good one. It's kind of a mix between an Xbox controller, a Nintendo Switch Pro controller, and a PS4. And it's definitely served me well over the past six months, but for all the reasons that I talked about earlier, I am going to switch over to the GameSir one for my primary testing controller. And so now that we've talked about design and all that other stuff, let's actually get into testing next. To start, there is some GameSir software. You can get it directly from the Microsoft Store, and this will allow you to do things like update the firmware. And you can also set up one of three different profiles to use for different control schemes. Now within each of these profiles, you can map the buttons however you'd like, not just the back buttons, but any of them. But as you can see here, I'm gonna map these two back buttons here to the jump and reload buttons for when I'm playing a first person shooter. And that's it, all you have to do is just change that out, super easy. Additionally, within the settings here, you have the ability to adjust the dead zone as well as the range for both of the analog sticks. And you can also do some software-based things like swapping out the left stick for the D-pad and vice versa. Going along in the settings here, you can also adjust the triggers. For example, here you can adjust how much force is required to get to the max button input. And so if you're playing a game that takes advantage of analog style triggers like this, then you could adjust this to your liking. Additionally, you can turn on the hair trigger, which means that no matter what you press down, it's going to give 100%. And so that might be helpful in certain shooter games too. And then finally, in this app, you're also able to change the vibration setting. There are four different rumble motors here. You have two in the triggers and two in the grips, and you can adjust the intensity of each of these individually. Personally, I found the defaults to be fine, but if you want them stronger or lighter, this is where you would change it. Finally, moving into game testing here, there are three types of games that I want to test with this controller. We'll start with platformers. For this kind of testing, I like to use Celeste because it'll give me a good idea whether or not the diagonals are going to register accurately and whether or not I can do left or right without accidentally getting a diagonal too. And for this type of game in particular, I found it to work out just fine. And so if I wanted to do left and right, absolutely no problem, but if I wanted a diagonal, it worked out good too. And so I think when it comes to just playing some platforming games, this will work out fine. Next up are first person shooter games, so I'm using the back bumpers here to do my reload and jumping, and then also just using the triggers and everything else just to make sure everything works well. And I gotta say, the control scheme here is working out beautifully. Now it's not perfect, I think there are some things that could be improved upon. For example, if they used hall sensor joysticks, then you could probably get some smoother gameplay. Hey everybody, this is Editing Rust here real quick, and I just realized that I was about to say that these feel like they have a hall sensor analog triggers, but they don't but it turns out that they actually do. And so I went on the website and verified that, yeah, I just forgot to check, but yes, these are Hall Sensor Analog Triggers. Just another reason why I like these controllers so much. That's why they feel so nice and smooth. Anyway, I know you haven't seen me in this room for a while, but this is still where I do all of my editing after I filmed everything. And by the way, look at the size of this collection. It's just gotten massive over the past few months. And so I need to do another like charity auction kind of run of all these handhelds and get them out to other people because I obviously can't play all of them. And so be on the lookout for that and I'll probably make an announcement when I put some more up on eBay. Anyway, let's get back to the video, but you're looking pretty good. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And finally, I wanted to play a fighting game, so here is Street Fighter V, and I primarily use the D-pad when I'm playing these style of games. Now personally, I like to use rubber membranes when it comes to D-pads, especially for fighting games, and so it definitely did affect my gameplay. I would say about 75% of the time I would hit the move when I wanted to, but the other 25% I did not. Now this may be something that I just adjust to over time, but as it stands right now, for me as one who kind of mashes the D-pad, it didn't work out as well as I would like. And so when it comes to these three type of games, I would say it's a two out of three. When it comes to first person shooter games and platformers, no problem. But if I was to play a fighting game, I would prefer something with a different D-pad. 
Now, all the games we just tested were on a Windows PC, so I can verify that yes, it works great on Windows, and I also tested it with the Steam Deck and Botticera, it worked great on those too. But of course, being that this is licensed for the Xbox, let's try out the Xbox next. And surprise, surprise, when I plugged this in, absolutely no problems, it immediately registered as an Xbox controller and worked out just fine with any game I tried. And so there's quite a range of things you could use this on. You have your Windows PCs, as well as the Steam Deck and Botticera, and then of course it works out great with the Xbox too. Okay, with all the testing out of the way, let's get to the summary and talk about what I like and what I don't like about the GameSir G7. To start, we'll talk about what I like. Number one, it has a very familiar feel to it. I've been using the Xbox as my primary home console since back in the 360 days, and yeah, this feels right at home. I also really like the trigger action on this controller. I think it's a little bit shallower than the Xbox Series controller, which just makes it feel really good and responsive. I also like some of the features they have packed in, for example, the ability to adjust the audio controls and the fact that they labeled them directly on the D-pad. It's one of those things where you have to look at the instruction manual just one time to figure it out, and then after that, you're good to go. I also really like the micro leaf switches on the face buttons. In fact, I like them a lot more than I thought I would. When I first got this controller in the mail, I did not expect to actually change the way I feel about controllers in general. But as it stands right now, these buttons are so responsive and tight that I actually want them on everything. I also like that this controller is somewhat customizable and not in a cheesy way. Being able to change out your faceplates like this is pretty awesome. And I hope that we're going to see a lot of different faceplate options in the future. In fact, this is kind of an idea that could live on for several years. Now, of course, this controller is not perfect, so let's talk about some of the things that I didn't really like about it. Number one, I thought the convex nature of the thumbsticks was just a little bit weird. I think they kind of did it just to make it look different than the Xbox, but all the same, I like the original Xbox design. Now, when it came to actually using the controller, I didn't notice it at all, but it might be something that bothers you depending on how you use your thumbsticks. I also recognize that many people like different types of D-pads, but for me personally, I did not like the D-pad on this controller. To me, it felt a lot like an Xbox One controllers, but a little bit harder to press down on. Now, I think for most games, it'll be just fine, but for fighting games in particular, for me, it felt like a less than stellar experience. And finally, I think that this controller is probably not for everyone, and that's just based on the limitations of having a wired controller in the first place. Personally, I like to use a wired controller when I'm using it with my PC game testing because that means I don't have to pair it with anything, I can just plug it in and start playing. However, that also means that I'm sitting at my desk, and so the idea of having a wire doesn't really bother me. However, if I was to play Xbox in my living room, I would definitely want something wireless, and so even though it does have a 10-foot cord, I personally don't like using a wired controller in that context, and so because of that, it's a little bit limited, at least for my own personal use case. But of course, there are some upsides with having a wired controller, for example, no need to worry about batteries at all. And so, when taking all of these things into context, what do I actually think about the GameSir G7, and do I recommend it for you? And personally, yes, I can easily recommend this controller for anybody who's in the market for something that's wired. Of course, if you're looking for something wireless, this is probably not a great fit, but maybe GameSir will come out with a Bluetooth or a 2.4 GHz version later. After all, that's exactly what 8 Do did with their Ultimate controller, and so I'm hoping to see that in the future. Either way, I think the proof is in the pudding, in the fact that this is now my primary wired controller for PC game testing. And for a guy who has dozens of controllers laying around the house, that's a pretty big deal. And so in the end, yes, I do have a couple misgivings about the D-pad, but otherwise I think this is a home run of a controller. And so let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you in the market for a wired controller, and does this one check off all the boxes for you? As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.